Welcome to the Sewing Machine Repair Guy. This is a channel where I help you avoid me, the Sewing Machine Repair Guy, and you can learn with me as I repair various machines. We also conduct reviews on new machines. Come learn with me. On today's episode, we're going to do a teardown and review of an LB5000S Brother Star Wars Edition sewing machine. Come learn with me. But first, some trivia. Where was Job, Job from the Bible, where did he live? We'll find out after we do the review. Let's get into it. As you can see, I got my stickers on there. I went with the Darth Vader. All I ever wanted was the Galaxy and the Star Wars sticker down there. I did have to remove that sticker that was there. Um, and so, you know, $150 worth of stickers, not too bad. They also give you some free or included designs that are Star Wars based. We'll get into that in another video. But for this video, we're going to tear this down and see what it's made of. One thing that Brother does is they separate, typically they'll separate out this end part over here so you can do maintenance in the needle area. Uh, this mechanism right here, that's how it threads the needle for you. It's just got a little spring on there, nothing to it, uh, not too bad. Now if you look in here, some of the mechanisms you'll see, so down here is where your needle threader gets actuated. The things that you have access to adjust in here, you can see uh, you've got your needle bar height, you can adjust that from here uh, with this screw right here. You can adjust the front to back clearance on your needle up here with another uh, adjustment screw which is an Allen wrench and actually I think you have to take the cover off in order to get access to that on the side. Well no, you can get to it on the back. Some of them have a hole in the back, this one does not to get to that adjustment, but there is a locking nut on there for you to be able to get to that. And then a few other adjustments down here based on positions and also um, for your presser foot. So you can get to quite a few adjustments that you need to do here in this end, so that's not too bad. Uh, yep, there's a bunch of plastic gears in here. And that's just the nature of the beast when you get to um, these newer machines. And then again, in the last video I talked about this a little bit. It does open and close and it stores a lot of stuff in there. So instead of being an open um, right here, when you pull it off, an opening where everything can fall out, this one actually has a lid, which is pretty nice. And it holds everything in for you, so that's good. So some other things that you take off first when you get into a machine, it's going to be your presser foot is going to come off. So like you see that the way that this goes right here, and that's similar to most machines these days, is you can change out that presser foot with no tools while it's connected to the machine because of this lever here on the back. From the factory, you get an organ. 7511 needle. So that's an Oregon 7511. As typical with most of their machines, this um, needle plate is metal and then the other portion of the needle plate around it is plastic, which is uh, it's cost savings, it's okay. Uh, the important part here is metal, where your presser foot and your feed dogs work together to move your fabric, and this metal, this aluminum that they've made this out of helps um, to be a nice hard surface for your fabric to slide right against pretty easily. And then underneath, you've got this contraption. Uh, what this does is it helps to hold in your bobbin case. 
So your bobbin case is held in by that. This case um, has two pieces of felt on there. Hook is a rotating hook. This one continues to go the same direction. It doesn't switch directions like some do. Some of them will flip around 180 degrees and flip back and flip around. So this is gonna be a smooth running machine. And if you saw my last video when I was using it, it does run pretty smooth because it doesn't change direction. And see here's the connection for your um, table where, where you have your hoop connected and your arm, your arm connection where all the servos get their power there. All right, now it's time to take it the rest of the way apart because that's what we do with our new toys. You tear them apart and see how they work. Let me just show you here. So if you look at these, these are the four screws that I just pulled out and every single one is completely different. Uh, the ones that have threads that are really spread apart, those are going to be plastic on plastic connections. And the ones where the threads are really close together, those are used for uh, metal connections. So there is a metal frame in here that we're connecting to, uh, which is a good thing. We'd like to see a metal frame inside of our sewing machine. Let me show you. I've got the front off and it looks like the only thing connecting us to the front is one connector. So the only electronic connection here is one. So it can be disconnected here on the front panel or it could be disconnected right down here inside the machine. So I'm going to choose the front connection. And it pulls off just like that. Now the front panel is clear. We can take a look at that. See what we've got there and there. They have slimmed down their electronics over the years. More sophisticated, but less to it, at least on the front panel. All right, so as I look at this, I do not believe that I had to take off the screws on the bottom. So I'm gonna put that back together and then we'll see if we can put it back together, put the pieces back together when we're done. So we got the covers off. Now we have the frame of the machine. This frame is a cast frame, uh, probably aluminum, but it's a good thick metal cast frame. So not too bad. Uh, the plastic that they're using, this is just your typical plastic. There's nothing special about it. It's ABS plastic. And this is the same kind of stuff you'll see in all new sewing machines, is that ABS plastic um, with clips. So Brother doesn't always do 
the clips that make it really hard to pull it apart. Uh, in fact, when you pull it apart, you end up with little pry marks. I use plastic tools, but you still end up getting little tiny pry marks when pulling these things apart, which is upsetting. Also, they tend to break. So this one right here, let's do this. So that is broken right there. just from taking it apart for maintenance, which you have to do on Brother Machines because of the types of bushings that they use. What do we, a Mitsumi, and there are all the numbers on it. It's gonna be a pulse width modulated motor uh, controlled by all of this stuff right here. We're not gonna go through all those components, but you can see that you do have uh, that's a buzzer right there. That's your brain. 8582A is the brain of the operation. I don't know if we can get in closer and see more, but I'm not going to rip that off. Try and figure out what kind of chips are on there. That's your brains of the operation. So you get these wires are the ones that go to your arm and all the servos that run the embroidery hoop through that connection right there. And then you also have connection here. So you have a couple of different motors. There's one, there's one. This is typical what you're gonna see for these uh, machines. In this case, you have a actual belt driven hook so the hook is the timing could possibly um, be off on one of these machines because um, it's belt driven and if you skip one of those teeth then you could have a timing issue so some electronic machines that hook is driven by uh, motors or, or a separate servo system and then those are really never going to be out of time this one could be out of time if it skips something on the belt or if one of our gears um, slips on there. So this is the bushing that I was talking about on these machines that we've had problems with in the past on older, um, well actually relatively newer machines have problems with those bushings. And the real problem I think when I look at those machines and I see all the rust that's on these shafts is the fact that these shafts uh, the um, chrome plating on them is so thin that uh, rust just works its way through there over time. And then when that happens underneath that bearing surface and you've got the rust rotating inside that bearing, it just eats away at the, at the bushing. It's not on a bearing, it's a bushing. And um, causes this thing to have to work really hard in your motor since it's drawn more current than what's programmed in that little brain right there, throws a code and stops working. And you just get a little code on your screen and it says, hey, I'm done. And you gotta figure out why. Okay, these little uh, stepper motors are really handy. When they started putting these in the machines, it's actually a good thing um, because they're very precise. And uh, when you change things, in here with that stepper motor like your feed rate gets uh, the feed dogs right there are controlled by a stepper motor and it's very precise on the stitch length so these things have a very beautiful uh, stitch a very con consistent stitch because the length is controlled by the brain the electronic brain in these um, motors uh, this one over here is actually probably your thread cutter motor and like I said, this motor right here is going to be controlling your feed dogs right there. See how they'll go up and down, but they're not actually going back and forth because that's controlled by that motor.
So uh, we have a metal hook on this one, which is nice. So on a previous machine we looked at, they had a plastic um, rotating hook assembly and then the hook itself was metal. This, this whole thing is metal, which is good. Uh, what you want to do on this machine is every so often, and I might do it now since I have it open, is you want to put oil on all four of those bushings. Uh, and probably a nice little coat of oil on the shaft as well, upper and lower. So our upper shaft is right here. You want to put um, just a little bit of oil. You don't want to get too much. You don't want it dripping everywhere. Uh, you don't want to get on your belt, but just a little bit. And then you put a drip on either side of your bushings, which are in there. There's four bushings. There's one here. There's one over here. Let's see if we can find it right there. That hole. And then you've got one on the end down here, which is a little hard to see. And then you have one over here. So we continue our tour of the machine going up here. Uh, we already looked at the bushing behind here. We already looked at our circuit board. Um, up here is your up here is your um, this is your bobbin winder so when this thing goes over it engages this little rubber tire it's actually called a tire on here and so the motor will turn this because when your motor turns it see there's a clutch in there normally doesn't turn it but the motor turns this directly and that will wind your bobbin. So over time, these tires do degrade. Um, however, that time would be 30 years-ish. And uh, this machine in particular will not be around 30 years from now, trust me. These electronics were not built to last 30 years. Again, nice. So this is a metal bracket attached to the case. But again, we've got metal in there. So when you're pulling up and holding this handle, you're connected to metal, which is good. Uh, and then over here is your tension assembly tensioner. So you can see that goes all the way up to nine. That's your highest tension. And then zero is your lowest. You usually try and keep it in the middle. And then you fine tune based on how it's actually sewing. And then when your um, presser foot is up, that pulls your tension off of here. So watch, I'm going to lower the presser foot. You see how that changes and it's raised again. So there's no tension between here. That's where the thread goes in there and between those two plates. Uh, no tension now. And then when I lower my feed, my presser foot, then I get tension. And now the spring is what's pushing that closed. So it's a neat little design. Uh, here's another little tensioner, so that's a fine tensioner just to make provide a little bit more tension on there. Um, and then this is your, your coarse tension. All these have adjustments, so your tension can be adjusted. I don't ever recommend it. Uh, it should be done by professionals. And even we don't mess with tension a whole lot. Usually if there's a tension issue, there's something else going on in the machine. Uh, we already kind of looked at this before you've got a bunch of gears in here to um, that's how you get all the zigzags so the needle left to right when your needles moving like this so it doesn't do that for uh, embroidery but it does that for any of those special stitches that you see on the machine um, that you can do without being an embroidery machine that's just as a regular sewing machine um, right here so not too many people, so not too many people use this ever, but uh, that's for when you're doing buttonholing and you have a, a rig or a little jig that goes on here and then when it goes to a certain point it hits that and it's going to stop and then it'll come back. So that's, that's what that's for. That's actually been around for many years and it's the same, same assembly, just now it's electronic instead of um, what it was in the past, little switches and things. So. That's that. Let's look on the back, see if there's anything back here worthy to talk about. Um, this is going to be your high voltage 
So your 120 volts that comes in from your power on the side here comes through here. This is where it turns into power that the computer can use. So it turns into a lower voltage up here for your computer. And in DC, that's going to um, be used for the motor. So this switch, if you can see the feed dogs, they went, they went down when I switched that. So that's what that's for. See how they're raising up and down, up and down. And then if you turn them off, that's just disengaged the feed dogs, so they're going to stay down. That's all that switch does. A lot of machines have that switch, and if you accidentally switch it and don't realize what you did, you're, you're going to stop feeding material and wonder why. All right, so now I'm going to go down through my list of things that I want to talk about during these reviews to make sure I got everything. Uh, the type of machine, so we know that this is a uh, rotating hook machine. It's, uh, it's got infinitely variable speed control because this is electronically controlled. And then that's the speed you can control with the switch on top. We found out earlier that the uh, speed is, uh, when it goes in reverse, it's the same as what you have had it set for and forward. So the forward and reverse speeds are the same uh, depending on that setting. So that's a good thing, I like that. Uh, usability, ease of use, so we did I did use this earlier in my other video and it was very easy to thread. It was very easy to get started and to use it right out of the box. So I give it high, rate, high uh, ratings on that. Uh, durability, it's a plastic sewing machine. So the exterior durability of this plastic is what it is. It's plastic. So um, the one thing I do like about it is that the metal frame is where the hook, the um, handle connects and it does have the metal frame so it's a very strong machine I can't get that needle to move by pushing on this frame so that's a, that's very good stitch quality so this does have a very good stitch quality and it's also electronically controlled for the length of the stitches so it's very consistent as well vibration and noise when this thing operated it was very smooth and you can see because it's a rotating hook that um, it's going to be a more smooth operating machine the feed dogs are controlled electronically. Um, they go up and down mechanically, but the forward to back motion is electronic, so all of that um, is electronic. And then the hook control, the hook is actually mechanically controlled along with the needle, so um, that's how that goes. As far as plastic in the machine for operating components, um, the plastic gears on the shaft for the, for the um, belts is pretty much standard nowadays. Um, you're not going to find one with metal. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure unless you go into industrial machines. Um, but you do have all metal uh, between the needle all the way up to the shaft, the upper shaft. And then um, on the lower, let's take a look at this. There's going to be a plastic gear in here. I just wanted to look at it. Um, let's see. Yeah, so you've got plastic gears in between the um, hook and the shaft, the lower shaft. The belts are pretty good quality. Uh, these are going to last a while. Uh, I have not had any issues with these kind of belts before. Um, but again, the electronics are going to give out before this machine gets passed down to my grandchildren. Uh, this is not a machine that's going to last forever just because of that. The electronics just inherently don't last. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about here, ease of maintenance. This machine is not my favorite as far as um, working on it from a, mecha a mechanic standpoint. Um, I'd never like the machines that have all these plastic tabs that you have to disconnect in order to get the plastic off. So Brother doesn't always have that. They did for this machine and uh, I'm not a fan because uh, they use less screws and more of those plastic clips to hold it together. So it's harder to, uh, for me to pull it apart without damaging the machine. 
So when I get this back together, there's going to be little marks in the plastic. Even though I use plastic pry tools, there's still going to be some little marks in, those, in the plastic. And uh, some customers don't like that. And <laughs> they, they notice it right away. And they're not happy that they have those. But unfortunately, uh, you have to... Um, I haven't found a way yet, I guess, is a better way to put that, to get in without causing somewhat. So the, the marks that I have made are incredibly tiny. You'll probably never see them, um, but they're there. Uh, they could have been a lot worse had I been prying with screwdrivers. That would have been a lot worse. Yeah, I'm gonna get this put back together and then try my hand at some embroidery. which is something I've never done before. Well, what did we learn today about the LB5000S Brother Star Wars Edition? Well, I've got it split up into some good and some bad. So let's go through the good first. Good, this is a very smooth operating machine. Uh, it is a rotating hook, so this thing uh, continues to go in the same direction, which means it's gonna operate very smoothly. It's got a metal frame. I'm a big fan of these machines have a metal frame. It's also got some heft to it. When you pick it up, you can feel that it is indeed made of metal inside. It's got stepper motors that do the feeding and your left to right needle motion. And what that does for you is it gives you very consistent stitches whenever you're operating the machine as a regular sewing machine or even embroidery as well, because there are stepper motors in the embroidery section. Um, accessibility of the needle end is good. So when I pull off that first cover on the needle end, I can get to the adjustments, all the adjustments that I need to, to adjust the needle end portion of this machine. Now I'm being very specific there because one of the downsides of this machine is its ability or the ability of, of me as a mechanic to go in and take it apart without causing damage. So, uh, the, the two big detractors for this machine, in my eyes, is when I open up this machine, I have to uh, get those plastic tabs undone, which is it's pretty rough for a mechanic to do. Uh, even when I'm using plastic tools, it still can cause small little nicks in the plastic when you pull it apart. Um, also, it's a Brother machine, it has those bushings. So the Brother bushings that tend to go bad over time, if you use the machine quite a bit, those bushings go bad. Uh, so what I do recommend is that you oil your machine frequently, um, and frequently I mean by more than what Brother recommends, which is not at all. So once every six months, maybe once every year, it depends on how frequently you use your machine. If you use it every day, it should be more frequently. Uh, if you use it, do a project and put it away for a few months, then maybe once a year is fine. Um, but it does have those bushings, and uh, like I said before, I'm pretty sure that that's due to the uh, really thin chrome coating on the, um, on the shafts, but uh, I don't know for sure. So, overall, is it a good machine? Would I buy the machine again if I had a choice? Uh, well, yeah, it's Star Wars, so yes, I would buy it again. Um, but also, for all the good reasons that I had on there, they outweigh the bad reasons. Um, and I think it is a good machine. It's a solid machine. I think it's a good buy. Which brings us to our trivia. The answer to our trivia question. The question was, where did Job live? Well, according to Job 1, 1, so Job chapter 1, verse 1, he was from the land of Uz. So there you go. Hey, thanks for learning with the sewing machine repair guy today. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did like it, please give me a subscribe. Also, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any ideas of how I can make these videos better, please make a comment below. I read all the comments and I'd love to hear your ideas. If you have ideas for another video, I'd love to hear that too. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later.